Hollywood Star Playhouse. Tales of suspense, thrills, adventure by Hollywood's finest writers with Hollywood's top stars. Haunt Me Not, starring Miss Deborah Carr. What's so frightening about a girl driving her car across the continent? Well, suppose I do have a flat tire or something goes wrong. Why, Janice, you can just charm some man into helping you out. Men are your best cards, my dear. Until it comes to murder. I hadn't the slightest worry or premonition when I swung my convertible west onto Highway 11 out of New York. At Harrisburg, I picked up the turnpike and headed toward Pittsburgh in an early dinner. It began to rain when I switched to Route 40 for Columbus, Ohio. About an hour outside Columbus, I pulled into a typical, friendly little roadside eating place for some coffee. There was only one vacant stool at the counter. Yes, ma... Yes, ma'am. <laughs> What'll it be? Coffee, please. No sugar or cream. Coffee straight, okay. It sure sounds like the storm's growing, doesn't it? Hey, you. Yes, sir? I've got a piece of apple pie. Yes, sir. Coming right up. Here you are. Here's coffee, man. Thanks. Uh, uh, how far are you driving? Los Angeles. Yeah? Uh, all by yourself? It's been done before. Well, yeah, sure. But California's a long way. A girl like you must uh, get mighty lonesome. I've got a radio in the car. Well, yeah, but still a good-looking girl like you. Yeah, apple pie? Well, uh, yeah, yeah. Cutting it right now, mister. That convertible outside yours? What? I said, is that convertible your car? Why, yes. I like yellow cars. Well, thank you, what? Yeah, this apple pie was baked. Hey, hey, mister. Wait, here's your pie. I changed my mind. Yeah, but the hamburger at 50 cents. I left it on the counter. Gosh. Gee. I get more characters in here. Hey, you, uh, you notice that red beard on? Nope. Uh, what's a guy want with scraggly whiskers unless he's in the movies or something? Huh? Well, well, what do you think? Well, you know, it ain't just as though he needed a shave. <laughs> Boy, some character... You, you know something... How much was that uh, coffee? What? Oh, oh, dime. But now look, baby, if I was you traveling alone at night... Here I... you are. Good night. Yeah, well, hey, hey, wait a minute. What's the matter? I say something? Good night. Okay, okay. In my regards, L.A. <laughs> When I nosed my car back onto the highway, the rain was flooding down the windshield faster than the wiper could clear it off. About ten minutes after leaving the cafe, I happened to glance into my rear vision mirror. Staring back at me from the rear seat was a face with a red beard. For a moment, I almost let go the steering wheel. And then he climbed over the seat and dropped down beside me. And, uh... I thought you might like some company on your trip to L.A. Who? Look here, what do you mean by this? I got tired of hitching rides. Thanks for not looking in the back of your car when you got in. Hey, what are you slowing down for? Because you're getting out right now. <laughs> in this rain? Uh, now, just a minute. Now don't go getting scared. Just keep your foot on the gas pedal and everything will be okay. I see. Are you threatening me? Come on, speed up. That's better. Miss Horton. No. You found the registration slip. That's right. Gotta keep that glove compartment locked. Janice Horton. <laughs> Let's make it Janice, huh? Let's keep moving. I I'm not really going far. No? How far? Just to Columbus. You told that counter jerk it was LA. Well, it's not. I'm I'm staying with friends in Columbus. We're almost there now. Yeah, I know. Too bad about your friends, though, isn't it? Why do you say that? Because you're going to have to disappoint them. You ain't stopping in Columbus. I certainly am. You can't prevent me. You want to find out, baby? Just keep driving. Stop arguing. How about some music on the radio? Uh, now you're acting the way I like. Sure, go ahead. A little music will keep you from sitting here wondering what... This is from Korea. I'm the truce headquarters at Panmunjom. And now for news nearer. The 
headline story again comes tonight from Cleveland. Police are still looking for the man who burglarized the JJ Manufacturing Company and killed the night watchman. Turn it off. But you wow. said... Turn it off. Don't turn it on again, understand? Yes. I understand. <laughs> you know something? Get real good looking when you're scared. <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to get along okay, real okay. Please, I... I need room to steer. What's the matter? I bet you've let guys get closer than this before. Sure, you're the kind that can't keep them away. Oh, but you could, Janice. You've always been able to handle men just the way you wanted. Until now. Perhaps if you played up to this one. Perhaps if you could throw him off his guard. So, I smiled at him. I let him put his arm around me and tried not to shudder when he did. But he knew what was going on in my mind. When we reached the city limits of Columbus, he made me detour through the residential district where there were no traffic police. Then we picked up the highway again on the west side of town. The rain stopped and the moon came out. We went on and on into the night. See that gas station up ahead on the right? Yes. You can pull in and fill her up. I'm going to make a phone call. Yes. All right. You like the idea, huh? Don't think you're going to talk to the station guy because I'm going to be right alongside of you every second with this. Please. Put it away. Please. <laughs> it's a gun scare, yeah? <laughs> That's good. Now pull it. While the station attendant filled the tank, the man with the red beard forced me to go to the telephone with him. He put in a long-distance call to some place named Emeryville in Kansas. He talked to somebody he called yeah. Doc. Yeah. yeah, I'll be there sometime tomorrow night. I'm hitching a ride with the dam. You'll see me. The yellow convertible with New York plates. The girl's name is Janice. Yeah, took 14 gallons, man. That's $3. I, I have a credit card. Oh, then I'll write it up. Okay. Um, by the way, are you done with this newspaper? Yeah, sure. You want it? Thank you very much. When the attendant gave me the charge slip, instead of writing my name, I scribbled three words. Help. Get police. As I handed it to him, the man with the beard grabbed my arm and took me back to the car. While he was climbing in beside me, my eyes raced over the front page of the paper. Yes, there it was, his picture, and the headline, Fugitive Killer. Silently, I prayed that the man at the gas station had seen the picture in the newspaper and recognized him. And please, oh, please let him read my charge slip. Too bad you had to go and get that paper. Why, why do you say that? Cut the innocence. Let's see how they wrote me out. Cleveland police are redoubling the search for notorious gunman William Red Krieger. Witnesses of yesterday's robbery and murder believe Krieger was aided by an accomplice. As yet, I'm unidentified. <laughs> accomplice. <laughs> That's you, baby. What? You're my accomplice from now on. <laughs> I can't let you get away from me now that you're wise, can I? Well, you must be crazy. This is kidnapping, and when the police catch up with yeah, you... Yeah, sure. Supposing they don't. Oh, they will. We'll see. You know the town of Emeryville? No. It's right in the middle of Kansas, Route 40. Just a few houses, general store, and all-night garage. So we get there tomorrow night. We can't make it to Kansas by tomorrow night. Why not? I, I've got to sleep. I left New York this morning. I've been driving all day. I've got to get some rest. I told Doc I'd be in Emeryville tomorrow night. And it's going to be tomorrow night, see? Yes. Tomorrow night. <laughs> you see, all you need is a boss. You've been looking for a guy like me all your life, baby. <laughs> Come on, smile. Tell me I'm your dream guy. Oh, right? you are, you are. <laughs> Not married, are you? You don't see a wedding ring, do you? No. Smart girl. Hey, uh, what's so important for you out in L.A.? I'm going to spend my vacation out there with my sister. Were, baby, you were. Now something better's come along. Me. Hey. Hey, what's that? 
A motorcycle. Behind us? Right behind us. I think I raced him so you can hear his siren. No, you don't. So the police wouldn't catch up with you, Mr. Krieger. You're too Shut smart. Up. Sorry. You're not giving me any more orders. As long as you feel this sticking oh. in your ribs, I'm running things, see? Now, maybe this cop is just cruising, so no speeding, no swinging over the white line to get his attention. Understand? Understand? Look up ahead, Mr. Krieger. See all those cars up there? Roadblock. Yes, roadblock. Turn around. Turn around. With that motorcycle right behind okay, us. Okay, okay. Slow down and listen. This is what we're going to do. When the cops start looking in the car, I'm going to be asleep. See, I'm going to pull my coat up around my face, and you're going to tell them I'm sick not to trouble me. I'm your husband, get it? It won't work. It's better. You won't be around to know it, baby. You see, if I go, you go first. <sighs> For the first time, I wasn't afraid of his threats. The gas station man had read my appeal for help on the charge slip. He had warned the police. No, Krieger would not use the gun. Not now. Not when he was completely surrounded. As I slowed the car to a stop, I counted them. There were eight officers. And I knew they were just waiting to take this killer off my hands. Now. Officer! All right, lady. Flick your headlights on the upper beam. What? Your headlights on the upper beam, please. This is a safety check. But I... Listen. Disappointed, baby, aren't you? Officer! Don't say it, baby, or so help me. I'll pull this trigger. Oh. Oh, that's fine. Now start up your car as fast as you can, and when the officer up ahead waves his arm at you, <laughs> slam on the brakes and stop fast. <laughs> well, what's so funny, lady? Watch it. Nothing, officer. Nothing at all. Well, then, go ahead, please. But, officer... I said I, go ahead. I... Oh. There's the signal. Stop. Perfect brakes, lady. If everybody was like you, there wouldn't be anything to worry about on the highway. Okay, go on. Go on. Go ahead, lady. <laughs> you see? Just like that. Like the man said, if everybody was like you, there wouldn't be anything to worry about on the highway. <laughs> This much I knew. The man who was forcing me to drive him across the country. Krieger, the man with the red beard, was a killer who was wanted, dead, or alive. Perhaps sane, very possibly mad. When we'd reach Emeryville, Kansas, and he'd meet his friend Doc, my usefulness would be over, and he would dispose of me. But I drove on. Dayton, Indianapolis, St. Louis. Daybreak came, and noon, and night again. I cried from exhaustion to sleep, oh, just to sleep. And then there was only numbness. Even Krieger began to crack under the strain. His head would drop forward, and then he would rouse himself and feel for the gun. If only he would doze off long enough. Because I had a plan. A desperate gamble, but... And then, west of Jefferson City, he did drop off to sleep. Quietly, cautiously, I reached to the dashboard and turned off the ignition. Uh, hey, what's going on? Oh, the engine, it... something's wrong, I guess. I... Well, what's the matter with it? Well, how should I know? I'm no mechanic. Uh, right in the middle of nowhere. I'll... I'll pull over to the side of the road. Maybe you can find out what's wrong. That don't mean I can fix it. What I know about a car, uh, you... Do you have any better suggestions? Look, baby, if this is something you've got... Oh, stop it, will you? Get out and take a look at the engine. Yeah, sure. You're getting out, too. My finger's staying right on this trigger. Well, come on. If you're going to look at the engine, I've got to stay here to release the catch on the hood. It's on a spring. Unless I hold it. See? Here it is. Okay. Okay, but remember... Go on, open the hood. All right, but it raises on the other side of the car. He started to walk around the front of the car. His gun was ready, but so was I. He stepped in front of the right-hand headlight. 
Start the starter. I jammed my foot against the starter and stepped on the gas. I felt the car jolt over his body, and then I stopped to look back. I was free. I was alive. And I had killed a man. Late that night, I reached Kansas City. I wanted to go to the police and tell them. But tell them what? I had to think. And I was exhausted. Too exhausted to know what I was doing. I checked into a hotel and slept the clock around. The next evening's paper said Krieger's body had been found. Now the police were searching for his accomplice. Yes, his accomplice. And wait. Maybe they wouldn't believe my story. Oh, don't get mixed up in this, Janice. I said you've been through enough. Get to Los Angeles and then forget. Yes, you did nothing wrong. Except kill a man. But it was justified. Or was it? In the eyes of the law. I left Kansas City that night and headed out across the Kansas Plains, my only company, the car radio. Sometime past midnight, I ran into a heavy ground fog that swirled around the car like cotton batting. And then... It was a rear tire. Now what? At that time of night and all that fog, I might have to wait hours for help. There was nothing to do but to limp on to the nearest town. That town was Emeryville. The place where the man with the red beard was going to meet somebody. I remembered that Krieger had told me there was an all-night garage. I finally made out its sign blurring through the mist. Yeah? What do you want? Can you fix me up with a new tire? Yes, sir. A large man in a rain slipper came toward me, dragging one foot. Then I saw his face. That same horrible, taunting face with the red beard. I don't know how long it was before I came to. When I did, I realized it was at the wheel. Oh. When you faint, you do it up good. Oh, no. No. You're dead. I put a second-hand tire on the wheel. Ought to hold out to L.A. Every bone in your body must have been broken. I know I killed you. Sure you did. It was even in the newspaper. But this isn't real. My brain, I... Th the dead don't come back. They don't. You can't ever get rid of me, baby. Not ever. I will. I will. <laughs> Go on. Jump out. You know what will happen to you at 70 miles an hour? <laughs> uh, you see, you couldn't do it. I'll kill you again. You've got to die. 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 Okay, die. baby. <laughs> Slowly, consciousness returned, and with it a throbbing in my head from the blow of his gun. Then, mild fo followed terrible mile, across into Colorado, down through Utah, over into Arizona. The car nosed into a small range town, almost deserted except for a few loafers standing in cafe doorways. Ahead of us was a lumbering cattle truck. We couldn't pass, but went slower slower. Stop! You fool! I dashed toward a man lounging against a street lamp. Help! Don't let him get me. How's that, ma'am? Get me to a policeman. Please, hurry. Oh, Easterner, ain't you? Out here with home deputies. Oh, no, you're drunk. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> hurry, my wife's trouble in this. Oh, she ain't no trouble. Just striking up Nice friendship. Yeah. He's dead. I killed him, and now he's coming back. And a fan? Hi. <laughs> Quite a talker, isn't she? Come on, Tammy. No, let go of me. Mind if I take her other arm? She's getting kind of steady. 
Now, what to? Back to the car. No, 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 no. I was kind of hoping you folks would be feeling thirsty. Uh, how about that? No, she's had enough already. <laughs> oh, can't hold the stuff, eh? <laughs> Okay, Janice, you're going to drive. Oh, no, ain't that kind of chancy, Frank? She'll be careful. I'll see the next. Maybe next time you can have a little later. Or maybe two or three. <laughs> I had lost my last chance. From now on, he never took his eyes or his gun off me. The highway narrowed and twisted and turned down grade. It was the Hassiampa Gorge. With every turn of the wheels, the question hammered through my brain. What is he? Dead or alive? Dead or alive? Dead or alive? I turned on the radio to try to reach out for some assurance of reality. Ladies, because blueberry muffins are just as easy, just as simple as they are delicious. First, we take two lots of fresh on the turns, baby. You have that? Good. Then we sift it carefully. Then add three quarters of salt. You're trying to ditch us in the ravine. Slow down. Two teaspoons of baking powder. Did you hear me? I said stop. Stop. No. No. Look out. Look out. Yes. Doctor says you're going to be all right. Who? Who are you? Lieutenant Garvey, Phoenix Police. Police? Yes. I killed him. We know. But he wouldn't die. He came back. I couldn't get away from him. He's haunting me. Haunting me. He won't anymore, miss. He'll be doing a 20-year stretch as soon as he's out of this house. But he's dead, I tell you. Dead. I know. I killed him. Yes. Yes, Miss Horton. You killed Red Krieger in self-defense. It was Doc Krieger, his twin brother, that went over the mountainside with you. Twin? That's right. Red's accomplice in the Cleveland killing. He was hiding out there in Emeryville, waiting for Red. Thanks for turning him over to us. Oh. Lieutenant. Yes? My face? Hmm. No, Scott. You sure? Would you like proof? What are you doing tomorrow night? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Thanks, Lieutenant. But it all depends on how long it takes me to reach Los Angeles by train. <laughs> Deborah, please accept our thanks for that mighty fine performance. Thanks very much. It was fun to do, Wendell. And it was nice to work with such a fine cast. Tony Barrett, Byron Kane, Bob Griffin, Chester Stratton, Dal McKinnon, Kurt Martell, and Stan Waxman, who played the part of Red Krieger. Stan's really much nicer than that, you know. <laughs> thanks again, Deborah. You have been listening to the Hollywood Star Playhouse, Tales of Mystery, Suspense, and Dynamic Adventure. Starring the greatest names of stage, screen, and radio. Tune in again next week at the same time for more suspense and thrills in another action packed story of high intrigue. <laughs>